Hey guys, welcome back to another video. We have some news and I wanted to share it in this video. If you guys enjoy this, do me a favor, tap that like button, smash subscribe, turn on the notification so you don't miss any of my uploads. Let's get right into it. I am going on to the PTR server and then I'm going to be checking something in here. First of all, I wanted to mention this. Now, this is not a PTR only thing. This is also on the live server, but you can get to this map right here by typing in the forward slash join my house. And this used to be just a solo map where you would come here and you could only be in one instance by yourself. Well, this is no longer the case. This map can now hold up to, I think it's 50 people in this one map. So I just wanted to share that. This is kind of like the preview thing of having your own house. I did mention this in a previous video, but I just want to mention that they had increased the player cap in this location for those of you wanting to have a house party. Now we're going to be jumping over to the Hartwood Forest. There has been a change that I was informed about, and this is, hmm, I, I don't want to say a big problem, but it seems like it could be an issue. So take a look at this right here. We have a level 43 Twilight Hound with 9,600 HP. And some of these other ones here, this one here, 9,600. You've got this one down here with 10,000 HP. So here's the stats right here. Let's just take a snap of that right there. Those are the stats of this lurker. Now we're back on the live server and I'm in the same dungeon that I was in the PTR. Let's take a look at the stats of the lurking behemoth. So here's the stats of the lurking behemoth on Let's bring up the other one from the PTR. We can compare the two stats right here. As you can see, everything here is identical. You've got 5,000 attack, uh, sorry, armor, 2,000 attack, 5,000 crit, and 5,000 haste. This is identical to this. The only difference between these two is the health. Right here, you got max health, which is 10 thousand now if you're in this dungeon on the ptr with two players this health right here doubles it gets to twenty thousand compared to this which jumps up just over five thousand so you're going from five thousand with two players you're going from five thousand up to twenty thousand that is a huge huge change looking up more information in regards to this change, I discovered that the devs are working on unrelated back-end support stuff. Now, this is unrelated to the guild stuff. This is currently, of course, I'm talking in reference to the PTR server. In addition to that, this is an additional system that will give more granular control over how things get scaled so that we can better finely tune things like dungeons. This would be why the dungeons on the PTR are currently being affected. So the dungeon that I showed you guys being changed from what it was, this is due to this new support back end system that they're working on. So I'm hoping what the results are in the Heartwood is of course just from their trial and error, not something that's going to be a permanent change because it that would make things a whole lot different. I wanted to show you guys some images we got on Twitter. Now this is what Dej posted right here. The fiendish spear of Nogath. And of course if you've played AQ Worlds, you might recognize this thing. Looks very cool with the lightning flashing on and everything. Looks very nice. Here's a preview of the wand slash dagger in the game. Here's a preview of the new helm in the game. Look at that thing. It's so gross. This is the updated version of it. He tweaked it to have a, an animation with it. But that thing is creepy. I like it. There's also two other versions of it. This is the first one. 
And this is the second one. We've also got a new wolf that's going to be coming to the game. Look at this. Very nice looking wolf. Absolutely gorgeous. And I had seen a suggestion. It's funny too because this is exactly what I'm thinking right here. Waiting for this thing right here. The nation like and this would be very cool. Would love to have a travel form of this. And it's very possible we might. Reason why Dej posted this. He put in a request. So it's possible we're going to get a werewolf travel form in the game. Cross your fingers, guys. By now, you guys probably heard that we had a big event that went on this past weekend. This was a big community collaboration between a whole bunch of different guilds and stuff. It went really well. Big thanks to everybody involved with that. If you guys attended, you would have seen some of the things that had gone on from bush racing to spawn events to fashion shows and stuff. It was really cool. At the end of the day, we had a spawn event thing and one of the devs was able to show up and spawn a few live event chests. Shout out to Clarion for that. Big thanks. It was awesome that the devs were able to do that. So thanks to all the devs who were involved in the decision of allowing Clarion to do that. And he took time out of his weekend to show up. So very, very cool. And it was a lot of fun doing that. And I'm hoping we see more of that in the future as well. Just, you know, short events, spawning a few things here and there, because it's very cool. Now, in regards to this, I wanted to mention this thing right here. This is a suggestion from Lord of Fury, where he says, been trying to think of an idea to propose to the 3D team. I really want there to be a way for the community to support itself without the use of monetary values. And then mentions some sort of year-round boss spawn that could become accessible to all players. Now, there are two signs to this I'm going to mention, but before I get to that, I'll finish his thought. Whether it can be purchased with tokens, live event coins, or a daily summon like the macabre boss, I want to push for a year-round available spawn that the community can use to come together. Not everyone is fortunate enough to spend thousands of DCs. And I will also mention, during this past event, there were people who did spend a lot, a lot of money on the stuff. We had over 100,000 Arctic points given away. Over 100,000. So that's that's a lot. After the collab weekend, it was evident that the community still enjoys coming together if the rewards are worth their time. As someone that has always wanted to support community involvement, I really want to see more tools put into the players' hands. Players are always going to buy stuff. However, it's usually the same few community leaders that end up buying the spawns and getting the credit. There are plenty of other players with a passion for the gaming community that simply cannot afford 1k DC per spawn, excluding bushes, which are 500. I'm not saying don't fund the game. It has to support itself at the end of the day, but the community needs more options to stay unified. The more active the player base is, the more likely it is newer players can stay. Now, so here, here's the, this is, this is basically where I'll mention there's, there's a pro and con to this. Number one, giving away free spawnables can hurt the game. And I will explain why. The Gift Thulus is a perfect example of this. Guardians were getting free Gift Thulus. This, is, this also includes the other spawns that they could get for free. These things can cause chaos in maps like Battleon when a player is trying to simply interact with an NPC, but they can't because they're locked in battle because somebody spawned a Gift Thulu right in front of the NPC because people are just spawning them anywhere because they just got them for free. So who cares? I can spawn it and I control people. And that's what some people do. Unfortunately, players like that cause problems for those of us who would use our spawns in a proper way. I'll use myself as an example. I have a Raven that can pretty much one hit everybody in the game. I do not spawn it in places where it's going to hinder anybody. I spawn it in places where I know it's going to be enjoyed because that's the intent and purpose. But when people are getting these other things and not using them responsibly, this is what's going to cause the problems. So while I like this idea and I think this is great, there's another side to it. If they were to release an item that you could use to spawn something, 
it would have to be extremely valuable. Loki Monster suggested using the capstones because it might work for that. This might actually work, but if they did do it through capstones, that means that not everybody would be able to spawn it because you would need to have a certain amount of capstones. The thing is, they could make it, they could set it so that it requires a large amount of capstones so people can't buy 50 of them using all of their capstones. So there would be a way of balancing it so that you could still spawn stuff for free, but it would require a large amount of capstones or whatever token they decide, you know, to make it worth it. But it would be a valuable thing to be able to collect these spawnables and spawn them. It wouldn't be something that you can just get in 10 minutes. It, you would need the certain amount of capstones or whatever they decide to do. But capstones could definitely work. They that would also give them value as well, especially if you need a large amount of them in order to purchase some that could potentially work. That way they could get free without having to spend DC, but it would still, you're not just going to want to squander your spawns because you're working towards getting the spawns. That could work. Also, having a DC option for the same spawn could work. Anyways, I just thought it was something that was in interesting. I wanted to mention it in this video. Last but not least is the scent of the day. I saw this and I had to put it in for the set of the day because it shows the orange hair that was recently added in the barbershop, as well as the foxtail and fox ears. This is perfect. But that is it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching and keep those swords swinging.